everybody, look at that. It's the author of Aster, The Rise and Fall of American Fortune, Anderson Cooper. Now, it is no secret. The, the Astors, of course, one of the, the, the great sort of fin de siècle, golden age American families. I don't know what fin de siècle means, but yes. One End of the, the one, cycle. Yeah, yes, know, like one, of the, the, one of the richest families in America for, for, for generations. Right, and it's no secret that you are a scion of the Vanderbilts. <laughs> are you sure? Okay. Sure, come yeah, on. Okay. You know what scion means? Well, I, scion means you like... you to go to Yale? Scion... <laughs> Again. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Did you ever rub elbow with an Astor? So, yes, I worked as a waiter. Well, so, I first met Brooke Astor, who was sort of the last in the line. She'd married Vincent Astor famously for five and a half miserable years of marriage and inherited his entire fortune and used it to give money back to the city of New York um, and to uh, build herself in, in society in New York. I had met her when I was like 13 in a restaurant called Mortimer's, which was like the society restaurant at 75th and Lexington. And my mom and I, and my brother would go there. My mom would take us there. And we would always, like, talk afterward. Because Mortimer, Mortimer was, was this crazy scene of, like, the bar at Star Wars, except it was, like, Klaus von Bülow and Dominic Dunn and all these society figures in the Upper East Side. And, you know, it was kind of fun to watch all this stuff. One day we're sitting there, Brooke Astor walks in, and I don't know who she is. I don't, I, at that point, I didn't know who the Astors were. And I'm like, who's this little old lady in a very big fur coat? Not realizing that the Astors actually first fortune was made in the slaughter of beavers and the beaver trade. Um, and, well, you know, what? Anyway, I'm not gonna argue about the beaver trade. He didn't do it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she came over to the table, and I instantly knew my mom did not like Brooke Astor. And my mom never would say mean things about people, but when she wanted to say something, she had a language all her own. So she said, I asked her later, why don't you like Brooke Astor? And she was like, I don't know, she just never grabbed me, which was from my mom like the biggest insult. She just never grabbed me. It's very understated and waspy. Uh, and then, uh, uh, yeah, her biggest insult was about, like, Vincent Astor, uh, Brooke's dreadful husband. Uh, and my mom's, that was my mom's word, his dreadful. <laughs> that was the biggest insult. Right. But fast forward, I worked as a waiter at Mortimer's, and uh, I ran into Brooke Astor and a couple years later after meeting her several times. And she, when I said her name, she looked at me, and for a moment, she smiled, but I was wearing the waiter outfit, so she didn't recognize me as Gloria Vanderbilt's son. I was just the waiter. And she, like, a smile had just started to form, and then as soon as she saw my waiter outfit and my face, it just dropped, and she just <laughs> kept on walking. And for me, it was a really important moment in my life of realizing, like, I mean, I realized this already before, but to, to see how one gets treated when you're not standing next to Gloria Vanderbilt and people know you're her son. It, it, it's important for everybody to work in service. Oh, my God. It's yeah. the greatest. So, I was the worst waiter in New York. Oh, you were? Horrible. Why would Horrible. you be a bad waiter? I was worked in an outdoor cafe. It was the summer. I couldn't d develop a system. Like, if you wanted more water and someone else on that plate needed, uh, you know, a fresh fork, I, I couldn't figure out how to do both and make one trip. <laughs> I would just like run with the water and I'd come back and then I'd put the water down and then I'd go get the fork and I'd uh, be all sweating in a few minutes and I'd arrive at people's tables like sweating and dripping, which <laughs> no one wants to see in a waiter. And it got to the point, it was so bad that summer, I started saying to people who were sitting at my tables, you might want to sit at someone else's station <laughs> because I'm just not very good. Oh my God. Yeah, I did. Oh my I God. I, I made no I, money. I <laughs> thought that you would be, somehow I thought no, you would be. No, now a good I would be great. I would be great now. Because we have, I have plates here. Oh, I remember. I, was, oh. I have plates here. here. I'll show you. It's the only was, thing I remember. I was wondering. So the only thing I remember. Like no, is, so yeah. Order up, order up, right, Cooper. Right. So you put this, order and up. then you do the two fingers, and then the plate on top. The, it was the third plate that for me was always, that was the, the, the problem. Oh, right there, there it is. There right you there. go. Yes. There you go. Did you, did you do the tray? Could no, we didn't do the tray. No. You couldn't do the, could you oh. do the tray spin? How long were you a waiter for? Five years. Five years. <laughs> Five years as a waiter. Wow. And as you can tell, I wasn't very busy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. Yeah. Wow, you're Don't good. forget to tip out your back waiter. <laughs> Um, Anderson, lovely to see you. Nice to see you, Thank Steven. you for setting us straight on so many things this <laughs> evening, especially your new book, Aster, The Rise and Fall of an American Fortune. It's available now. The man is Anderson Cooper, everybody. Thank you, Anderson. <laughs> we'll be right back with a performance by Japanese Breakfast.